Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to look at when and why you would, when how you can implement a interface using either the type or a pointer to a type. Now, if you remember, we said when you're implementing a an interface, all you have to do is put the receiver as the receiver, the type that you want the, um, the method, the interface to be implemented for, right? If you don't remember, we're going to review it. Don't worry. The question now is when do you use T versus a pointer to the type? Whether you use a type versus a pointer to the type? Enough talking. Let's sort of just jump in and take a look at that. Okay. So let's go here and done the usual thing. So I already got a code running, so I don't waste your time. This is the code that we have from the previous section. And so we can see we have this type person and then we have these interfaces here. So we're going to get rid of one of the interface. We don't need that. And so this interface, I'm going to change this and I'm going to say this is a person modifier interface. Let's call it person modifier interface. So it tells us MODIF modifier person modifier interface and it tells us its intent that it intends to modify a person. So with my more modifier a method name, let's call this change name. Okay. And so again, remember in Go, it means whether uppercase or lowercase, right? Whether you can call it from inside or outside the package, but whatever. So I'm going to call that change name. And of course, if it's going to change the name, it takes some value, which is a string and change the name of a person. Well, that's the signature of the method on this interface. It doesn't dictate anything about who should implement it, right? That's not the purpose of the interface. The interface only says that I need to be able to call a function called change name that takes a string or whatever object that's attached to, well, it's supposed to know what it's supposed to do in the implementation. So let's go down here now and let's do this. And I'm going to um, get rid of this for now. I don't need this thing. I'm going to still leave this implementation here because this is going to work with, um, you know, printf for the Go language, um, library itself, the standard, the formatted package library. And here I'm going to say that let's implement change name. Now remember to implement a method, all I need to do is copy that from an interface, sorry, to implement an interface. All I need to do is copy that and this is called change name, right? Same as above here, change name. So we see the both are the same. And I call this V and this is a string. Okay, all right, good. So this is supposed to change a name. Well, the way I imagine this working is that the receiver is going to be passed in here because I want to implement this change name to, ah, you know what might be a better name for this? It's got this guy name changer. Haha, <laughs> name changer. Okay. And name changer, I want to implement name changer for person. No, I could also implement name changer for when I was doing ducks that had a name field. I could have done that too. So, okay. So name changer, I want to implement it for this method. So I have the method here. So obviously now I'm implementing this interface. If I can define my receiver here, which I'm going to say, I want to do it for P a person. So the person type. Okay. Does that make sense? So we always say, so the method, when you're implementing an interface, you put the method and then you say, which type is the receiver. And that tells you that you're implementing this method for that interface and then if you have implemented all the methods defined in the interface therefore you've implemented that interface okay it doesn't matter if it's overlap with another interface or not that's not important so what do i want to do here here i want to say p that name is equals to v so i am overwriting i'm doing exactly what this thing says i'm changing the name of this object that's passed in here right this receiver so now the question is uh, we don't have this method anymore. We don't have this. So the question is, if I do something like this, where I print out Jane and then I call Jane that change name. Of course, now you see Jane supports change name, right? So Jane has the fields age and name. It also has the method string from here. And then it, now it has this function change name. So change your name. I want you to change your name to not Jane, but 
Um, let's see. Mr. Rose. <laughs> All right. So we can change name, Jane's name to Mr. Rose. And we're going to print it again. And what we expect is to see, you know, the name change. So let's run it and see. Oh, not that. I want to do go run main. And of course, look at that. The name wasn't changed. Well, you shouldn't be surprised. You should have been a little bit suspicious when I told you that this method is called change name and I actually want to override the name. You should have seen that here the receiver is just um, a variable, right? Which is we know it's going to be cost past a copy of this. This is going to be past a copy, right? It's just almost like a parameter, right? It's, it's just that it's here in the receiver place, but you can think of it as a parameter. For people who come in from like C++ or, you know, Python or something, you might be thinking that, oh, you know, behind the scenes, the compiler is sort of doing something called self person. And here, you know, you're doing that. Okay. And of course, you don't really see this call to self. So when you in make an invocation like Jane, that, that, or that, behind the scene is actually passing Jane here and then the rest of the parameters. But of course, you don't see it, but you could think of it that way. I'm not going to confuse things by going down the road further. I'm just going to, we're just going to say that here, Jane is being passed in this receiver as a copy of Jane. So when you get in here and we change it, of course it changes it. But since it's just a copy, when we come back out from that change name method, um, it, it doesn't apply to Jane itself because it was a copy. And we can prove that by going in here, putting this in here, and then printing P. And we'll see that P does have the name, whatever, Mr. Rose, right? Because that was a copy. Only copy passed in there. So if then you see these function parameters, just remember it's passing by copy. So if we really wanted to change the name, we know how to do that. We know that if you want to affect the actual underlying object, because since you don't want to pass a copy of that old person object, but a pointer to it. And now we're saying something different. Now we're saying the receiver is a pointer. And um, now since I have a pointer to that object that's passed in, I'm going to change the name. Now we know from pointer arithmetic that um, in Go, if you have a pointer and then you can call a field on it like this, you don't actually have to dereference the pointer force. You don't need to actually say something like um, dereference this pointer P and then call uh, thing that would work, but for syntactic sugar, go just make it go line makes it super easy for you. So you don't have to do, it, do the pointer um, thing. So anyway, so we're gonna say using this pointer, I want to call name on it, and go is gonna dereference it and call name, and so as and assign v to it. And so now, well here we we're using a an object Jane. Jane is not a pointer. So you might be thinking, well, Verl, shouldn't you really be doing something like get the address of Jane and now I have a pointer and then now I have a pointer to person now I can invoke this method on it right and so um, let's do that and then this is Mr. Red all right Mr. Gold all right and so one notice I call here, I take the address of Jane, because Jane is just an object. I take the address of it, which now I get a pointer to a person, and I invoke on that pointer, change name. And I say, I want it to be Mr. Rose. And then I print that out. And I expect him to see Mr. Rose now, because now we're not talking about a copy of the object, but we're talking about a pointer to that object itself. So of course, I'm going to be able to change it. In this second one here, I, is this supposed to work? And so let's run it, and we'll see. And there it is it works and that's because um it's something we're going to learn in probably in the next chapter about method set and not to confuse anything but basically go along and saying that well you know what if i have an object i can totally take the address of it get a pointer to it and invoke the method so again it's saving you with that syntactic sugar so you don't actually have to do write ugly code like this code like this you can just leave it that way and so this also worked even though we said so we're using a pointer golang basically takes the pointer from this passes it in here for us even though we, we're using the object right here and now we're able to affect that thing so 
the answer then for the objective of, of this section is when do you use T to implement a type to implement an interface here we're using t is when you just want to read from it only as we are doing here we're not making any modification to that object so you could see our old function signature is a promise that oh the object that's being passed here when we when we call you know gene that string when we call that we are a string is not modifying gene in any way and then the promise in this signature is that, yes, I can potentially modify it. And so you would not implement an interface method with a pointer unless you intend for that interface method to change it. Or I would say unless that object is really, really big and you don't want to pass it around. If person represented, let's say, a really, a, a, you know, arrays and this and so on, and they're really, really big, then you may not want to eat, pass a copy each time. But then I'd say you probably want to re-architecture how your, your thing, um, your object, your type looks like, okay? And certainly if you're using slices, we know it how passing a slice around is just passing uh, like a reference almost to the underlying array. So you don't have to worry about that, right? So even if my, so instead of doing something like, okay, um, I don't know, if I want to put a big array here of whatever, so big list, for example, instead of using an array of you know 10,000 um, strings for example or ints or float or whatever right instead of doing that I can just use a slice because this is really gonna be an array of a thousand elements whereas if I can use a slice I know that there's an underlying array that I'm gonna be able to create and, a, and point here okay so uh, there are ways to get around to make sure this object is not too big. But if you ever get to that point, you might need to rethink um, your design if you're worried about the copy taking long. I don't want to make this, vi this video too long. I just wanted to demonstrate to you that when you implement an interface, the interface doesn't dictate, dictate what type of receiver you use. You, the person who implemented it, have to decide on the receiver. I know that sounds repetitive, but assuming this is your first time with a language go and you want to learn this stuff, um, I would like to repeat it to drive that point home. So I hope you're not annoyed by me re sort of repeating it to drive the point home. All right, see you in the next video. And we're gonna use sort of this information that how we can implement an interface with methods that are pointers to the receiver or just the type, which is co just copy of that type. And we're gonna start talking about method sets. So see you in the next video. I hope you learned something. I hope you kind of got the idea. Um, so I'll leave it here and maybe if you have some question, then I'll um, think. And the code runs, by the way. So the code still runs. So we can go back here and run the code. So it's not broken in any way. All right. Take care. See you in the next video. Please continue to subscribe. Please continue to post questions if you have them. And take care. Have a great day.